I'm Mike Morbitzer. I'm the Director of Innovation and Accountability at Groveport Madison. And I'm Carol Morbitzer. I'm the Director of Instruction and Achievement. The two of us are the two directors in the Office of Teaching and Learning. Carol and I have always stressed how vitally important it is to take an honest look at your district data. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a walkthrough of our most recent state report card. To begin our report card walkthrough, let's start at the beginning. Let's go to a search engine and enter Ohio report cards. Click Ohio school report cards. And enter Groveport Madison. And you'll see a pop-up. Make sure you select Groveport Madison local Franklin County. The first page of our district report card is our district home. And on this page, I'm going to point out several features that we're going to access during our presentation. And then also we encourage you to access and navigate on your own time. Uh, the first place I want to show you is because this is how we're going to navigate most of the website is through this district at a glance. It offers a pull down menu or a drop down menu where you see achievement, progress, gap closing, graduation, early literacy, and the college, career, workforce, and military readiness component are all available via that drop-down menu, as are some other pages, including gifted data, district detail, and financial data. Meanwhile, though, we're going to go to the bottom of the page or toward the middle, where we see that all those components are accessible from all of these buttons. And then also down the page, you're going to see more information about our district students, including enrollment, chronic absenteeism rate, four-year graduation rate, how many school buildings we have, um, and also some information about our teachers. And then you're going to be able to click on any one of these links for our school buildings to see uh, their individual pages that also give a descriptions of their overall rating, their achievement, progress, gap closing, graduation rate, and early literacy components. So let's go to the top of the page and begin our navigation of our Ohio report card for this year. We're going to start with achievement. On the achievement page, you're going to see that we have two stars. So our three and a half star improvement this year did not depend upon achievement. Our future improvement will depend on achievement in a big way. Right now, we're listed at two stars, meaning that we need support to meet state standards and academic achievement. That academic achievement is featured over here on the right side of the page where you see all of these Ohio State tests from elementary through end of course high school exams. On the left side of the page is where we find performance index. And performance index is something that I've used effectively over the years to help people understand how we get our achievement score in general. And it's really because of this tab called calculation. You can see in the calculation tab that there are different points awarded for different performance levels of our students throughout the district. We're gonna focus first on the proficient level right here in the middle, where for every percent of students who score at the proficient level, Groveport Madison receives one point, in this case totaling 22 points is figured into the calculation. If our students perform under the proficient level, first at the basic level, that calculation is made with only 0.6 points for the calculation, and for the limited, only 0.3. On the other hand, students who perform above the proficient level, we are awarded 1.1 points for each percent of those students, and then 1.2 for advanced and 1.3 for advanced plus. A student scores in the advanced plus range if that student is accelerated, and then also scores in the advanced range. That's how you are awarded the advanced plus bonus points. To put it simply, to have a higher performance index or PI, our students have to perform at higher levels on their Ohio State tests. We're going to scroll back up to the top of the page and we're going to click on that drop down menu again and click on progress. First thing I want to point out is you will see that we have four stars out of five on the progress component. The progress component measures the academic performance of students compared to the expected growth on Ohio State tests. As I scroll down the page, I want you to pay close attention to how much blue and green that you see. The green is evidence that the district met student growth expectations. The light blue is significant evidence that the district exceeded student growth expectations, and the dark blue is significant evidence that the district exceeded student growth by expectations by a larger magnitude. As we scroll back up and take a look at the blue and green again and the different grade levels and content areas, this is showing that our students are making a year's worth of growth in most areas, and in many cases, exceeding the state's expectations. 
And because of all this blue and green is the reason you see the four out of five stars. We're going to go back up to the district at a glance drop down. And this time we're going to go to the gap closing component. And again, I want to point out that we have four out of five stars. The gap closing component shows how well schools are meeting the performance expectations for subgroups of students. The best way to take a look at the gap closing component is to scroll down to the bottom of the page where you have two graphs. Take a close look at the graphs and you'll see these red dots. These dots represent the goals that the state set for each subgroup of students in English, language, arts, and math. The good news is we are extremely close to those red dots in many, many areas, and in some cases have exceeded the goals for the, set by the state. Like I said before, we have four stars in the gap closing component, and that's because our subgroups are very close to the goals set by the state, or in some cases exceeding. This is exciting because we are closing that achievement gap, showing that all students can learn. Let's next go to graduation. And to do that, we're going to go to the top of the page again. We're going to hit district down a glance, and we're going to click on graduation. You see we have three stars in this component, and those three stars indicates that we meet the state standards and graduation rate. What I'd like to focus you on, though, is this tab, comparison and trends. The graduation rate is a calculation of how long it takes to, is to graduate, whether that's in four years or five years. And you see these two bar graphs are quite similar. If we look at the four-year rates, you can just fly over and you can see that the district's rate is 90.8%, while the similar district grouping that we are in is 90.2. The state average for this component is 87.9, so we're above the similar district rankings and also the state ranking, too. We're going to go back up to the district at a glance drop-down, and this time we're going to go to early literacy. And you'll notice right away with early literacy, we have two stars. And we know that this is an area that needs improvement. Um, the early literacy component is a measure of reading improvement and proficiency for students in kindergarten through third grade. The best way to take a look at early literacy is to go ahead and scroll down to see the three measures. And those three measures are proficiency in third grade reading, promotion to fourth grade, and improving K-3 literacy. And when you look at the K-3 literacy percentage that we have, 27.2, if we are improving that K-3 literacy along the way, it, it goes without saying that our proficiency in third grade reading will improve as well. We recognize that this is an area that needs improvement. We adopted and are implementing our new CKLA English language arts curriculum, and we're really focusing on progress monitoring our students this year. We're identifying their weaknesses, monitoring their progress, and providing interventions as necessary. Unfortunately, we won't see the results of this hard work and these efforts until the fall of 2026 because the early literacy component on the state report card is behind. What I mean by that is this data is based on two data points from two years before. So for example, this score for the early literacy component was based on the fall of 22 benchmark to the fall of 23 benchmark that the students took. And then it shows up on the fall of 24 state report card. So again, we're not gonna see the results of everything that we're doing right now until 2026. The final component that we're gonna look at together, when we return to district at a glance, go to the top of the page and click college, career, workforce, and military readiness. Now it's on this component that it's important to note that this didn't actually figure into our three and a half stars this year. As you see this note on this page, the information on this page is provided for informational purposes. The component will not be rated and will not factor into the overall rating until next year at the earliest. So we achieved the 63.3%, which is about two and a half times better than we had performed before. And compared to eight districts that are nearest the neighbors around the area, it, we performed only second to Bexley. So it's an outstanding performance. That outstanding performance is going to continue, though, to show on, pre, on next report card because it's a two-year cohort, one year behind, that's being tracked. The reason we expect this component to continue to get better and better for us and really count a lot when it's finally counted on the state report card is because of all of the effort we're putting into our pathways. We're developing pathways for our students that count in this component. Also, our students who go to Easton Fairfield Career and Technical Schools, they do a lot to help this component as well. So again, we performed well. It didn't count this year, but it's going to count next year, and that's going to really add to our calculation 
and maybe even bring our three and a half stars up to four stars. We'll see how that goes. We're going to do everything we can to work toward that end. To wrap up this report card walkthrough, we want to make certain that we go back to District at a Glance and show you that there are three other pages on this website that are important for you to check out. One is for gifted students. Uh, another we would like you to check out is our district detail, which provides very detailed information about our enrollment throughout the district for our students, chronic absenteeism, attendance, mobility, and information about our district staff. Finally, we want to make sure that you see that there is still more information that's accessible from this page. If you go up to the top right-hand corner, there are three bars. Click on those three bars and you can see uh, how you can access different components, that you can download data, you can uh, generate advanced reports, and you can check out the archives, which gives you report cards from the last 21 years of Ohio report cards. We hope this walkthrough helps you understand and navigate the Ohio State report card. We are super excited with the progress that we've made, but are also very honest and understand that there are areas that we still need to work on and improve. With that said, this is truly a report card to celebrate. In the entire 21-year, seven-version history of the Ohio report card, when you scale this report card against all those others, this is our very best report card. So we're proud of that accomplishment, but we're still working hard to improve in the future.